Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to jump into DaVinci Resolve 17 and take a look at some drag and drop transitions that a company has sent me, uh, Video Hive has sent me some transitions to take a look at and I feel like with DaVinci Resolve, it's just one of those video editing softwares that a lot of people seem to think that just isn't a lot of presets out there that you have to go and create your own. And it's definitely true to the point where it has less than say Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro. This video is to show you that there are packs out there and this is a really full featured pack. It will be linked below if you do wanna check it out. So we're gonna jump into DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna play around with the different transitions, how it all works and yeah, just have a little bit of fun with some drag and drop transitions, which is, yeah, just something you don't see a huge amount of in the DaVinci Resolve ecosystem. Now, before we get into all that, if you guys enjoy these sorts of videos, tutorials, all about DaVinci Resolve and stuff like that, consider subscribing down below. It doesn't cost you anything. It makes me feel a hell of a lot better. So yeah, hit that button down below and yeah, we'll just jump in right now. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do is jump into DaVinci Resolve and open it up and take a look at this big transition pack. Now, what's really cool is when you purchase this pack in the link below and download it, you get a couple of tutorial videos explaining how to install it on your computer, which is good. A lot of these packs that you download give you text documents and can be a little bit of a, a little bit of a faff to install. This one is really, really simple. Effectively, all you're gonna wanna do is when you get to your project window here, you're gonna right click, you're gonna import project. It's gonna be this one here. And then you're gonna open that project. Uh, once you open that project, I'm gonna just open a different one because we've already done it. And if you purchase it, you can follow these tutorials yourself. They're really, really simple. But yeah, once you've done that, it'll open it up. You literally drag the project here in the media folder down into your power bins and it's pretty much done. Uh, that's how easy it is. And once you do that, you can open your power bins and you'll have it all the time. They're just gonna sit here no matter what project you're in. So what we have here is all the folders that come with the transition pack. Now there are LUTs and sound effects as well, but we're just gonna take a look at the transitions. It's separated into a few different folders. We have glitch, light leaks, and objects. These are basically video clips. So if I was to open one and just drag, it's literally just a video clip. You'd play it over the top of your video. And that's pretty much all they are. And then you have your seamless transitions, which actually affect the footage beneath it. They're all the same. They're just sorted into different folders based on the frame rate of your project. I did play around with like putting these onto different timelines with different frame rates. It kind of works, but not really. So basically if you're using a 23.976 frame rate project, this is the folder you want to use, and vice versa for the rest of them as well. So just stick to that. Now, when you open the transitions, so we're in 24 frame project now, you can basically see we have a few more folders. All these folders are going to show you all the different transitions. What's really cool about these transitions is that they are all fusion compositions. That means you can go in, you can edit them, you can add things to them, but you can also see how they built the transitions so that you can sort of teach yourself how to make your own. So let's drag this first one down here. And you can see when you add it to your timeline, it adds a fusion composition. What you wanna do is drag it over the two clips, try to center it as best you can. It kinda works if you do it off-centered, but you've got to keep in mind that the keyframes that are in Fusion are based off of this being the point of action. So if you offset it, the animations are going to happen too soon. So you do want to center it as best you can. And then, yeah, when you play this through, you get this really slick transition. And if you want to, with it selected, you can jump into Fusion, give it a little sec, and here you go you can see this is how they actually created the effect. So they used a bit of a directional blur to create the transition and then the JPEG damage, which is what's giving us this weird like pixel sorting thing. And you can go through and change it. If you wanna make it more blocky, you can. Go back to the edit tab and it's already done like so. Super simple. And they are all like this. So the fade uh, transition tab or folder, I guess, is going to just be a bunch of fades with different like flourishes, so color leaks, light leaks, that sort of thing, coming in from different directions, some spins. And like I said, you can add them here, play them back, and you get some really cool weird transitions. Moving on to the next one, we have our glitch. I love the glitch ones because these are just super cool and like old school and retro and just, these are my favorites. So some are really, really simple like that one. And then we have some analog glitches, which are a little bit more intense. 
And like I said, you can always go in at the center, click on it, go to Fusion, let it load, and then you can play around with however you want it to sort of do the effect, which is really cool. You can change how it works, you can change scales and all that kind of thing. And it's just a really good learning tool as well as a creative tool as well, because it just instantly updates. And you'll find a lot of these transitions follow a similar pattern. You'll have a bunch of really sort of standard ones that just have a little flourish and transition. And then we'll move into ones that start to move from dif different directions, whether that's from the left or the right. And then we have some spins as well. And they all kind of, they all sort of follow that, right? Which is kind of good because you know how to go through the folders. You know that if you want some that move, you go to the bottom of the folder. So that's how these all work. My favorites, uh, especially if you do vlogs and stuff, are the zoom in ones. And what I like about this is you can do classic zoom in, chuck it down on the timeline, and it does the zoom in. What you notice is currently it's just sort of zooming into the center. Because it's a fusion composition, you can click on it, go to fusion, and actually change what it zooms into. So you can click the transform, we move forward a bit and say we want it to zoom in at the back of the boat. With the transform node selected, we can literally just move the pivot, which is this little green thing here, and then push that to whatever direction we want the zoom to be. And that's as simple as that. Now it zooms into the boat as opposed to the center. That's how simple it works. What if you wanted to make it a longer transition? Well, you can do that too. You literally grab the handle, make it as long as you want. Again, you kind of want to make it as even as possible. Now, the thing is, it's not going to start the transition early. And that's because all the keyframes are in the center here. Hopefully you're following along. All you need to do is go to Fusion, go to your keyframe editor, and then literally just make it longer. So let's fit to scale, grab the transform and the zoom. We're literally going to grab those, move them to the end. Same with these ones, move them to the other end, and then pretty much that's it. It's gonna be weird, but there you go. Now the transition goes for the entire length. And that's pretty much the rule for all of these transitions. You can go in and fiddle with all of them. So let's take a look at the other part that comes with this transition pack, and that is the objects. So we've got glitch, light leaks, and objects. All of them are video clips, and literally all you would do is double click, and they all have audio tracks, but none of them have audio. So if I drag that, you can see that it has an audio track, but no audio. So you can either drag that on top and then like option or alt click and delete it. You don't really need it. And then, yeah, now you get this cool little overlay like so. And because this is a video clip, there's no harm in just making this a little bit shorter if you want like a little quick glitch like so. And there are heaps of different ones, which is super cool. My favorite glitch ones in Bad Signal is like this number seven here. It's a really kind of like cyberpunk 2077 vibe. And when you do like a nice little short clip of it, just adds a really cool little, yeah, I really, really like that one. Super, super cool. You also have objects, which is sick. So if we go down to glitch, you have objects here and you got like cars and all this sort of stuff and it's crazy like you know normally you do like a masking <coughs> you know normally you would do a masking transition well this kind of does it for you and you just have the car come over the top there it's kind of cool um definitely very specific you'd know exactly what you would need it for but you have some like planes, submarines, yacht. Maybe we'll do a yacht on this one because we're in the water. I don't know. Very specific. I'm not sure if I'd ever use some of them, but it's cool that it's there. And again, we have light leaks as well. So we can literally just drag a light leak over the top. Super long, but kind of cool. And obviously you don't have to use these for transitions. You can literally just chuck it over a clip if you want have it add a little bit of something to the footage. So yeah, that's the clip there. Now, yeah, so those are the transitions. This bundle comes with LUTs as well. So if we were to go over to the color tab, I have installed them all. So, so it adds a bunch of different LUTs. We have a lot of cinematic ones, which are really, really cool. And obviously you can hover over it. These are the first time I loaded it. So it is taking a little bit of time to load, but yeah, the fact that it comes with a lot of different LUTs is super, super cool and a bunch of sound effects as well. So if you wanna add some things to the transitions, you can. 
But yeah, that's the transition pack, guys. It's super easy to install, super easy to use and edit. Hopefully you got that from this video. So there you go, guys, some drag and drop transitions. As you can see, it is a fully featured pack that you can pick up. Again, link down below if you want to suss it out. I think this is a really great option for those people because DaVinci Resolve is a free video editor. So a lot of people use it as their first video editor. They don't have to put a lot of capital up front. And not everyone likes jumping into Fusion to play around with all the different features it has to build their own transitions. So packs like this, which are affordable for everyone, just make editing a whole lot easier. You can be a lot more creative and not have to worry about the technical aspect that not everyone likes to do. I definitely like doing it, but not everyone else. If you enjoyed the video, guys, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And like I said at the start, subscribe down below if you enjoy this sort of content. And until the next video, I'll catch you guys later.